Ready? Yep. Yo, we're back. Welcome to another episode of the BJJ Goons Podcast. I'm your host, Tim, a.k.a. Number One Stunner, a.k.a. Grips of the North Star, a.k.a. Jits Bay, a.k.a. Mr. I Heel Hook White Belts in the Gi because I train for the streets, a.k.a. The Mushmaster, a.k.a. The King of the BJJ Deathmatch, a.k.a. The Trainwreck God, a.k.a. Trillmonger, a.k.a. The Best Bout Machine, a.k.a. Fuck Your Rankings, I Want All the Smoke, a.k.a. The Elker Strangler, a.k.a. The Underground King, a.k.a. Blast Double Poppy, a.k.a. Musha T, Tim Spriggs. I miss you guys. Welcome back. Sitting, well, in an undisclosed location in the DMV is my co-host for the moment, for the time being, a former guest of the show in the PJJ Goons Guest Hall of Fame, Nico Ball. What's good, Nico? Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm sorry that uh, I don't have a long list of AKAs. I guess Nico Ball, no, no, Nico. I'm going to work on that AKA list, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, you got to add the AKAs. You got to add the AKAs. Uh, I know you guys are probably wondering what happened to Tony. Well, Tony is still part of the BJJ Goons family, but he's been really busy lately. I've been very busy lately. I've been dealing with a lot of Mushmaster clothing gear. We're trying to push the brand. BJJ Goons is back and kicking it. We got a special announcement at the end of the show related to that. And, you know, just pushing the brand forward, trying to start a clothing line. And, you know, I decided that it's best that we keep the show going. I cannot go to the BJJ Goon studio. I am social distancing. I'm taking care of two older people. I'm watching after them. You know, I have to go on food runs, get medicine, all that stuff. And I didn't think it was fair to them for me to go to someone else's place and you know, start recording a show and, you know, there's technical stuff going on in his end with the studio and we weren't sure about the quality. So I figured it was best that I record and I brought along someone that is deeply entrenched into the BJJ community. She knows the ins and outs of the business as a competitor, as a journalist, as a brand creator, as a philanthropist. So I decided to bring Nico Ball along and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the jiu-jitsu world or what's not going on because everything's been shut down (laughs) oh man i know some people have been out there secretly training but like i had even limited space to train at home so this quarantine has really sucked training wise but i mean business wise it's been pretty good i mean like we've actually like you were saying like we did a lot of work with the merch you have some new stuff coming out which i can't wait for when we're actually going to announce that um and i've just been doing a lot of work in rio too so but man i've been like everybody's posting their highlights of training and it's just really making me want to get back out there you're seeing people post highlights of training like now no, 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 from before. Everybody's like, oh. PBT, like, soldages, like, everybody when they were out competing, like, um oh, man. That's bold. <laughs> Even when you gave me my mind map, and then I was, like, re-watching some of my fights and looking up some of the matches, like, uh oh. <laughs> It's insane how much I miss jujitsu. I really miss the shit, man. Like, I think about it all day. I watch matches all day. I think about the techniques I want to do. I think about the matches I've won. I think about the matches I've lost and how to improve. I've been texting Master Donnie, being on his case, asking him a whole bunch of questions. And I I haven't gone this long without training since I was in high school. Since Since I started training, I've never gone this long without some kind of physical Physical contact on a mat. Yeah, the physical contact, right? Yeah. The aggression. Like, everybody home, nobody's training. How many people are just, like, pissed off because they're not getting it out of their system? I haven't even hugged anybody in, like, months. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have, I don't really have a shorty, and I'm not going to go for a booty call in a pandemic. So, like, any kind of physical contact with anyone I haven't done because even here, I can't give anybody a hug or a dap 
because I go and get the food. I'm a gopher. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. So you don't even... Okay, I have at least, like, a little bit of physical contact with like, <laughs> Are you lucky, my immediate house, you know? Like, so I have, like, roommates, too. So it's, like, it, I know some people are home completely alone. But, no, I have, like, three or four people that I can at least see on a daily basis. So what kind of workouts are you doing since now, like, you can't train? Uh, well... I have very limited space in my house, so I know everybody has been like buying mats and making dummies and like doing jujitsu with chairs and stuff. Um, but I really don't have that luxury, so I have a balcony in my house. So normally, if I'm working out, I have to work out outside. Um, and I actually have an MMA background, so I'm kind of just cheating. I kind of just like went back to doing more like boxing workouts like working on cardio um and doing conditioning stuff so like i'll do like 30 minutes of shadow boxing every day i'll do uh just like boxing combos to work on arms um mountain climbers i had a resistance band but then that broke so like my home my home gym equipment is actually like diminishing um do some yoga uh master lloyd you know he always has his like little drill like so we have our little secret drills so i have a, a grip drill that i always do so i do that for 10 or 20 minutes a day um there are some judo takedown entrance drills that he's taught me so i can do reps like up against a wall so i kind of work on little things like that but like notably getting in and getting sweaty and getting rounds like and having somebody like you know like really push you like i'm like i miss that part i don't think anything can replicate a nice sparring session i don't think it can do it i've been doing jujitsu for so long i can't think of anything that can replicate it i don't think you can teach someone jujitsu through zoom you can watch film, you can get it broken down for you, you can discuss theory, but I don't think you can, I don't think you can do the level of teaching that needs to be done with hand-to-hand -hand contact. Mm -hmm. That's, that sucks. Like, I, I, I had a whole list of stuff that I wanted to drill, and I was on a roll, and then now it's wiped out. Yeah. Wiped out yeah. completely. And I had to mentally drill and then in my mind, I'm like, well, that's not going to work. And then I have to spar to test it. That's putting me behind schedule. You know, However. <laughs> it's huh? funny that you mentioned that because you have a schedule. You're on the black belt schedule. But I'm on this TLI blue belt schedule. So we are very systematic. So I have this one thing that I've been drilling and I've been working on. And then, like, I keep messing up in competition and in training. It's like, a, like getting the back hook in a scramble. I keep missing the damn back hook in the scramble. But I've been getting it. I've been getting it. Like, off these crazy scrambles. I got it on Mahoney. Mahoney is so good at blocking that thing. So, like, mm -hmm. I've been getting it to the point where it's, like, I'm about to level up. Like, I'm finally about to get, like, something new that I can be drilling. Like, I got this back tape. And it's, like, uh, I'm pro probably back to another six months of drilling this damn back tape. <laughs> <laughs> mental reps help. I think the mental reps will help as long as your mind's in the game. Uh, it's issue. the timing, though. It's the timing. It's, it's, uh, I just... But think I about know, it. Everyone it's like, that, that, I miss the drilling. Too. It's like, uh... Yeah. Everyone else's timing is going to be off, too. Everybody. But I know Everybody. exactly when I go back, and I'm like, sorry, I'm a cheat on the team. There's one person who I want to roll with first, because uh, I don't know if you know, it's like uh, Benj Benjamin from High Style. You know who that is? No. <laughs> Purple belt. He's like my size, like He's laid back. Um, I don't know. And just like the way that we always roll. We always have like these really weird, complex flow, like in between flowing and fighting and like really confusing positions. And it's just like, I know that like we could put on some good music and then like just let it play for like 30 minutes and roll straight for 30 minutes. And that, that would just be like the best introduction back into jiu-jitsu. Like no warm up, no whatever. Just like nice 30 minute roll with Ben. I have a training partner like that. Ty Ryan Murphy is my oh. training partner like that. Where we just go, where we learn so much and you grow in that kind of sparring environment. Uh, yeah, I, you know, knowing Ty, I think it would be good, like, just to watch you two roll and listen to the commentary, too, to that. Like, you know, just you going back and forth. Yeah, <laughs> like, I got, I, we'll I got footage. 
<laughs> I have footage. I have footage of, of us wrestling, and then like one of the few days before pans, I got myself a stinger, like landed on the top of my head, like because you get lifted up on a double in wrestling, and the person that's lifting is on their knees. You're kind of in that like back take, like I'm I'm hugging his waist, but he has me lifted up, and I'm like, falling off his back. <laughs> and I, you know, I try to do the whole thing where you like you kick your legs to the side and reverse it like in collegiate wrestling, but I just bonk the top of my head on the mat. And we have good roles, we have good wrestling sessions. You need a training partner like that. And that's what I'm yearning for. I'm yearning for the ability to progress. And then I've been thinking, well, I have been, it's a gift and a curse. The curse is that I can't train, but the gift is I have the time to think about how I can improve as a competitor and what my flaws are and what I need to do to become the best of the best. I'm elite. I've won major titles. I've beaten great guys. There's still a lot of people that I need to defeat in my mind to be considered the best. And then I just been thinking about that, but yeah, you need a partner, man. Like you can't, there's no, there's no substitution. I miss the weight room. I miss my drink, my gym, access sports performance. I miss that. I miss being able to put up big weight. I have substituted that for doing a lot of push-ups and squats, burpees. I'm getting a pull-up bar built soon so I can start doing that. Because I still feel as though I'm strong. Like I think I'm I am I'm stronger than I thought I would be. And I, I, I might be more functionally strong because I'm doing a lot of calisthenics. Yeah, we'll you see. You can't go back to the gym and deal with Muhammad, so you better be doing those kind of calisthenics. Oh, my God, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a madman when I get back. What are, your, what are your plans for when we get back? As a competitor and as a, just a normal person, like when, when the shutdown starts easing over, what are some of your goals? I mean, my goal is definitely to get, like, right back into competition. Like, uh, I was supposed to be, so I work with, like, Favela Jiu-Jitsu, the company down in Brazil, doing, like, media coverage. And then I also work with Tedede Kids Project, um, which is the social project. So I sponsor their athletes. So normally every year, every August, when um, I have off of work for three weeks, because I'm a teacher here in D.C., um, I go down to Brazil. So last year I didn't get to go because I had like some injuries and I went to Masters Worlds and this year I was supposed to go down there and it's like, so it's like, I just want to kind of get back into, you know, being able to train, being able to get like onto like normal competition schedule, like, cause I thought I would be going to Worlds in June, you know, and all that. So it's like. I just went that first, that, that first competition back. Cause right before this, I had eye surgery. So I have been out, like I, I've been out for six months. I was just getting back in like DC open, I think was going to be my first competition back from surgery actually. Mm -hmm. And that got canceled. Yeah. So. Damn. Think about it like this. If it wasn't for this time off, you wouldn't have been able to improve on all these projects that we're doing. No, no. See that that's the problem. Like once we get back to quarantine, like, uh, my real job, like, it, it's hard being with my real job. Like, I love what I do, like, because I teach, like, English as a second language. So, like, I actually teach a lot of athletes. When I was in Brazil, I taught a lot of, like, MMA fighters English, you know, a lot of Brazilians that need to learn English, you know. So, it's a nice job. But, like, at the same time, like, I'm at the point, like, the Vela Jiu-Jitsu and Tedede Kids Project has grown a lot. And, like, I need to... I need to be able to go down to Brazil for like two or three months um, and really do like some staff training and professional development with the people down there. Cause you know, like they're all, I don't want to say like, Oh, they're all from the favela, but like, they're all from, you know, they don't know anything about business, you know? Um, so you can't just be like, Oh, you're good at jujitsu. You like jujitsu, start a business and make it work. Like, no, they like need business training, but like they're jujitsu athletes. So they don't want to do anything but jujitsu. So, you know, I just kind of got to be there and like, it's hard to do it in three weeks um, that I have available. And like now we're kind of growing. So I really kind of need like a month or two. And I want to take advantage and go do like Brazilian Nationals, Rio Open. I've been trying to get you and Jamil and Malachi to go down to Brazil. Like I'm always telling everybody to go down to Brazil. So like, I would love to be able to quit my job after this quarantine and like, you know, 
be bringing everybody to Brazil for them competitions. Yeah. I'm trying to do every tournament possible when we get back. So, I'm yeah, posted it I want to go to Europeans next year. No excuses. I'm going to put this out there. 2021 is going to be the year of the Mushmaster. I'm doing every tournament I can do. Regional, international, big, small, it doesn't matter. I'm going for that double Grand Slam. So I need to make as much money as possible. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing the virtual coaching, the mind maps, and the, and the match critiques. That's what I've been doing. They're doing okay. And I'm trying to sell this Mushmaster gear. And we have a drop coming up, hopefully very soon, for like a really big movement in the jiu-jitsu game. And that's all I can really say. But that's the goal. I, I'm visualizing and I'm speaking into an existence right now because that's yeah, all I have. Thumbs with the Mushmaster shirt while you're working on something else. Like, Say that again? Said dropping crumbs with the little Mushmaster shirt while you work on yeah. something else behind the scenes. Yeah. That's, and I'm putting it out, speaking into existence. One of my other goals is to convert where my house where I stay and like kind of make that into, you know how they have the badass ranch or Cowboys, Cowboys Tronies thing? Mm. Or do you remember Viva La Bam? Yeah. Bam Margera? Yeah. I want to make, I want to have a crib like that, but for jujitsu. That's where I want to go. So that's, that's the goal for when this is cleared up. So, you know, buy my merch and all that stuff, get my virtual coaching, all that. Speaking of going back to normal, what is your opinion on all these schools opening back up? How do you, how do you see it? Because I know Tanner Rice has been on this online crusade saying that jujitsu is essential. I'm seeing a lot of people that I'm cool with or know in the game. I see a lot of them speaking their voice, having their voice heard, complaining or protesting. You're seeing people with rifles walk into buildings, uh, basically state buildings, the capital of states, protesting. What do you think about all this? What do you think about the gyms opening back up before the state allows it or says that it's essential? What's your take? As someone that is a educator, but also someone who is a martial artist, and it's affecting you, I, I guess. What are your thoughts? I mean, I understand where people are coming from, and I don't want like I don't want to come off like as a complete, you know, jerk or anything like that. It's like so I don't know if anybody's like seen my stuff. Uh, no, it says it right here. Okay, so here it is: Fabella Jiu Jitsu, and it says survival of the fittest, right? Um, which comes from Darwin's theory of evolution. You know, it's genetics. It only the strong survive. So, you know, I understand, like, why people love jujitsu, the respect for jujitsu. Like, I was having, like, this conversation about, like, fight islands. Like, you know, as a fighter, as somebody that's lived in fight houses with poor fighters and people trying to fight their way out of favelas, like, I understand why people are pushing to open things up. At the same time, like, this is some crazy shit. Like, this is a global pandemic. Like, nobody in their lifetime has seen something like this. It's, like, kind of serious. Like, people are worried about, like, when, like, hospitals not having ventilators and stuff like this. And, like, being able to fill that scarcity. It's, like, after the scarcity in ventilators would be, like, the scarcity in healthcare workers that are dying because they're treating people, you know? So it's like, you know, that isn't the issue. It's like the fact that people aren't protected when they're trying to help these sick people. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like a crazy situation and some people don't think it's as serious as it is and some people don't. At the same point, I don't think people should open up. But at the same time, I'm a Darwinist. So if you want to be dumb and go out in the middle of a pandemic and risk it, like, that's your choice to do something stupid. But, like, I mean, nobody knows what's going to happen. Like, and there's no way to speak to it. But, like, me personally, like, 
I am a competitor and I want to go back to competing at like high level competition. Corona isn't going to help me if I get that, you know. I also have people like I'm paying um, for people's salaries in Brazil. Like if I get sick because I wanted to go out and train like and I can't, you know, do the payroll, people depend on me. So it's like, you know, if you want to go out to the gym, more power to you. You know, I have I go to the post office because I have to ship stuff. So I was at the post office twice today. Like, that's the risk I take. Everybody can do what they want. But, like, when gyms open up, my ass going to be at home. <laughs> I've been mulling over this and thinking about this situation that we're all in since the day they canceled PANS. When I think about the uh, whole situation, a lot of it has to be... I think the major issue we have in the discourse is people think that science doesn't exist, or they don't agree with what experts say. It's the death of expertise. I see it in jujitsu. I see it in sports. I see it in things that I have mastered. I've seen it in things that I don't know about. And another thing is a lack of empathy and a lack of community. So let's go to like the whole debate of whether it's serious or not. I defer to experts. In everything I do, I look for people that know more about what I'm talking about than I do, so I can have an educated opinion. I know several emergency management, healthcare workers, a whole nine, doctors, you know, people that deal with sick people, nurses, all that. So when they tell me it's a big deal and that it's important for us as a society to hunker down so that, you know, not that I prevent myself from getting sick, but also prevent someone else from getting sick, I usually take that for what they say. Because these people are in the front lines, they've taken the time to study, they live the consequences head on. Mm -hmm. Not somebody that saw some YouTube video, they five some crackpot with an agenda. So I'm not a scientist, I don't know about the numbers specifically, but what I do know is that my black ass is staying home. <laughs> because I think it's my responsibility as a citizen to protect people that are not as well off as me. And I don't want to get into politics, so I'm not going to say what political side you're on because whatever side you're on, a huge issue in our society is a lack of empathy. We don't care about other people. We don't. I want to get my groove on. I want to go to the damn beach. I want to train. I don't give a damn if other people get sick. Now, they, I understand you're... You, you, I agree there is survival of the fittest, and I also agree that I also agree that we have to stay inside. Like it is survival of the fittest, but why make it worse than it has to be? Why exasper exasperate a problem because you're selfish? The fits, like fit, fit is physically and mentally, you know, like yes. you know, the people that are yes. smart enough to make that decision yes. stay inside. Like, yes, like, and, and I get it. And here's the thing with the empathy. It goes to the top because if our society really had empathy and we cared about other people, the people in charge would make it so it's possible for us to not to starve to death or go bankrupt having to stay home because we are trying to be good citizens and we're, not, and we're trying to make it so as many people survive in this community, this country that we all live in. That's the whole point. But, you know, a $1,200 freaking check you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, of course. No one's going to be able to survive off of that. So the situation has made it that, whatever it is, for whatever reason, our society, we made it so if you can't work or you're forced to go out there and make a dollar in a dangerous position. And oh, by the way, you're not going to get hazard pay. You're not going to get extra money from your job from going out there. You know, you're not going to get extra money. You need it. And it's not like whatever government you support whoever's going to bail you out. 
So that's the situation we're in. So this whole lack of empathy and this anti-science stuff has got us to a point where we have jujitsu fighters and jujitsu gyms trying to bully or try to sway public opinion in the community because they're afraid their money might not be right. Now, I don't know how to run a gym, but I've talked to a few people and they told me like a lot of the, some of these gyms shouldn't be complaining because jujitsu gyms are pretty lucrative. So I don't, but I don't know everyone's financial situation. I don't know. But from my understanding, a lot of these gyms will be okay. And a lot of people are paying dues throughout this anyway, or they're saying they're making a deal like, you know, we'll, you pay now and we'll take it off the back end later. I don't know. Yeah. I, and, you know, I, I pose this question to people. If you could stay home and still make the same money, would you keep your gym closed or would you open it and risk people getting sick? Because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to the coronavirus gym. All these people want to open up early and everything. If I'm a gym owner, is the stigma of you being one of the people that opened up early or before the cutoff and then someone gets sick, deathly ill, or even dies? Do you want that stigma just because you wanted a couple months more of the memberships? Because I'm going to tell you now, no one's going to the COVID-19 gym. That's terrible publicity. And not only that, what if you get someone who doesn't even train sick? Like, I could be healthy. I have a hunch that I might have already had it, but that's another story for another time. <laughs> I'm not going to put myself out there and get a family member sick. Like, for me, I have elderly people that live with me. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to get their medicine and their food. It is my responsibility to look after them. It's everyone's responsibility to look out for everybody else, but they don't get it. And it's, and it's very interesting to me you know, a lot of things like this whole discourse, pay attention to the people that are complaining now. Most of the people that are crying anti-science are, it's about money. They, they're, they're saying like, I have my rights. I have my right to open the gym. It's because you have a gym and that's why. It's money. It's not about, it's not about science to you. So you're going to tell and spread all this BS that happens on social media all the time, these BS articles, everyone wants to be a constitutional theorist and all this bullshit. And it just, it's just this tiresome, man. It's just, it's just old and it's whack. Like, jujitsu gyms can't even control ringworm. What makes you think that you're going to have the answer to keep people from getting the coronavirus? Bama's got ringworm and staff and MRSA and wrestling mats and shit. I've been to gyms that they don't clean the mats. Like, like, I've been to gyms. I've seen gyms that don't clean. They are dirty ass bathrooms, or the people, or some people are just dirty. But you're telling me you got the answer. We just had a documentary called Daisy Fresh, where they trained with holes in the ceilings, with possums living in the gym, sharing gear. Oh, that's the laundromat one? Yes. Yeah. Oh, Are you that's telling me? Or, right? Yes, a jiu-jitsu gym's the last place I'm going to be during a pandemic. Don't, don't understand? And in Maryland, the gyms aren't even allowed to be open yet. Yeah. It's, it's crazy to me. It's ignorant. Because... I think it's, it's interesting what you say about community, though. Like, because, you know... That's the thing. If people are worried about money, it's like... Some people that like, I know some people are still paying their gym fees. I know some people are at home, like, especially if they have government jobs and they're not working because they can't get on like secure networks. So they're still getting paid and they're getting stipends. And like, so there's some people that are dealing with like that fear and uncertainty of how they're going to pay their bills. And then there's other people that are getting full checks, not doing any work and also getting like, like that stimulus. So it, there, it's definitely interesting because there's definitely like uh, two different. This haves and haves nots. But there's like one. Hmm? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just saying there's haves and have nots. But, yeah. Like one thing I have noticed, like like because I do have like the nonprofit, so like I do help out Today Kids Project is, uh, like so normally we just sponsor athletes, like we don't pay salaries, but the academy closed. And even when the academy in Rio is open, they only pay one person, and everybody else just kind of hustles. It's like you know, go give private lessons or go do this or go do that. But like since COVID, since they can't hustle, like they can't be out there doing anything. Like I'm like, I'm paying their salaries and I'm like, I, I'm paying out more money than I ever had in the five years that I've worked with them. And it's like, 
some of it's coming from like uh i just dropped a new hoodie um and you know and like i like that made i made maybe like over a thousand dollars like this week in the middle of a pandemic off of a hoodie and it all came from ft canada so you know not only did they buy the hoodie they paid that shipping price and it was a lot you know and that that is community and like that's what you see a lot in jujitsu because all of those people that went out and bought $60 hoodies and all of that money that I'm going to be able to go back and pay the instructors at Today Kids Project that weren't getting money before so that I know that like when they can open, they're okay. You know, like sometimes it's just like one of the instructors, it's like I, I make sure his internet's paid, you know, like some people just need like certain things. Some people need enough money like to get to work. That's all they need. But like, you know, and there has been a community. There's been, like, in 301 MMA in Maryland, like, there's been some people from their gym that have been just sending donations just to help out, you know, in the middle of all this. They're still, like, thinking of other people. So, you know, there's, like, a group of people that are just, like, oh, worried about what they're going to do. And then, like, a, like, you know, I have, like, I have been in contact with a lot of people that have done a lot, and I just, I'm really grateful for that community, you know. It's just awesome. And that's what we need, you know. This brought a lot of things together, you know. I, you and I started working more closely with our brands to try to get something going. And that's what we need now. That's the type of community that we need. Not complaining that your gym is closed, you know, not spreading gossip online. It has to be, we have to make conscious effort to work together to get the sport back. It's, a, it's one of these things, you know, they have the saying, laugh now, cry later. You want to be slick and open your gym. You want to be slick and have these secret training sessions. But if someone gets sick, it's going to push it back even further. But I get it. I get the grind. But, it, you know, I, you know I, I used to just separate the two. But, I, like, life and jujitsu are microcosms of each other. If you really think about it, the problems that we're facing in the world really affect what's going on in jujitsu and MMA. Because I, I was going to talk a little bit about UFC 249. It's back, and like I didn't even yeah. know it was back until last week. Like I didn't get it. I didn't know there was. It's back. It's back. Yeah. And it's another example of how the lack of empathy in the society, or the way we set things up, where there's like no workers' rights. You know what I'm saying? There's no. There's no. There's no looking after the common man. Like I'm a. I'm a guy that is, I'm not going to say I'm self-made. I don't think anyone's really self-made, but I'm making it in jujitsu by hard work and determination, right? And it sucks being the common man. Like, I didn't, I didn't grow up rich. Like, I, I had everything I needed, but I'm not, I'm not some, some trust fund baby. I had to work for everything I have. And to know that I would be in a situation where I have to work and I don't have any social safety net. Like these fighters. But do they know, have to take the fights or are these people that are, are voluntarily asking and, and willing? Cause you could, you could not sign a contract. Could you not? Like, you know what? I think it's, they, they're going through the same situation that the school owners may be going through, but there's no oversight. There's no, there's no support. So, what I mean by this, you know how we talk about the stimulus, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there's a stimulus, like, because people can't work, like, it's okay to be, people say it's socialism, but it's okay for people to, for people to get paid to stay home is what I'm saying, right? But the way the world works here, you know, other countries, they're, they're, they're helping people out. But here in the States, they're like, it's social Darwinism. It's survival of the fittest, mm -hmm. like you said. So I don't think these fighters, if, you notice Conor McGregor's not trying to fight. He's talking shit, but he's not going to fight in the pandemic. No. I mean, like, Claudia Gadelia is fighting this weekend. And it's like, I know she's like, uh, had to back out of a couple fights because of injuries, but like, nobody can tell me she needs that fight. She's riding around in a Porsche, I'm pretty sure. Like, you know, she's a staff, she, and she has investments. Like she, I know she doesn't just fight. She invests her money in Brazil and here. So it's like, like, I, I don't know. I, I should try to ask it. It's like, I, assume I don't they just want to. I assume they're just like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know people's money. I don't know. I don't count anybody's money. But I just think that a lot of these guys are hard up. 
MMA fighter, you know, you know MMA fighters. I know MMA fighters. I know what I know the lifestyle. I'm not, you know, online insane, right? Champion you know, of one like, tell, me, tell me Johnny Walker was on this card, and I would be like, Yeah, Johnny Walker, he 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 needs that money still. Like, there's some name like Gaethje does it like Gaethje, Gaethje is good. Like Gaethje, Gaethje don't need he'll no be money. Good, but he could be like, they're like, this is your only chance for for a title for the time being. Take this or we're gonna there's it has to be ultimate. If, if Gaethje in his position was pressed like duress to take that then like i i don't know like i i, I don't how are you gonna be a champion and be like slut somebody be like after everything he's done like you're a fighter tell them to go fuck off like you can't like if you, think, you're talking about unions and things that you want you can't put like form a union if you have like top names just like it, it only takes it cabinet with one person it only takes one person i feel like you know i i just think that of these fighters I see that side, but I think they're in a, they feel as though they don't have any other options. And a lot of fighters don't make millions. Oh, we're gonna these, get. I thought these fighters. Podcast. We're gonna get one of these fighters on this podcast, and we're gonna talk this. Like, we're gonna talk about it, but I don't think fighters get paid enough. And you know, from what I hear and what I've seen from guys, fighters are living a hard fucking life. Sure. They have one. They do one of the most dangerous sports. I'd argue the most dangerous sport, the most difficult to handle and manage. They're taking all this damage and getting paid pennies. Do you really think if these fighters on the car were really good with money or they really had everything, their life was set, that they would be taking these fights during a global pandemic? They're desperate. They, look at the people on the card. Look at the people on the card and look at their position as a fighter. And I promise you, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, he would definitely need that paycheck. Or like, oh, he's on the come up. Or he would definitely. So, that's what I, some of them. But like, I mean. I don't know. Like, do you think it was the right decision to come back? Should they have? Because they because Jocko Ray got sick. I see. That's it. You know, somebody invited me to a fight party too, and I was like, uh, okay. a fight party. They're like, yeah, I'm gonna get the UFC. That's how I found out UFC was back was because I got invited to a fight party. And I was like, no, <laughs> like, I'm good. Like, Mad Bam was up in that joint. Uh, I was like, I was like, I don't. It was a good friend, so I'm not sure if it was like a big party. But I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not leaving my house. So I only watched the prelims here. But somebody invited me to a fight party, and then I saw Jack Ray had it. So Jack Ray had it because this was my whole issue that I was saying um, when they first started talking about Fight Island, and it was right after everything. I was like, I mean, for every fighter that's on the card, like even before they get to the event. That means they have to have at least five people in their training camp that are not quarantined. Like, you think, like, when Sadiq does sprints, he has a spotter. He doesn't do sprints by himself. Yeah. He doesn't do pad work by himself. He doesn't cut it weight by himself. He has, he brings three coaches to UFC. One of them is an older boxing coach, you know? So even just to have a fight camp, you are having, like, hundreds of people in different areas of the world bringing people out of quarantine to train. And then everybody that saw Jacques Array that was at that way and did they not have contact with the coronavirus? Everybody was in the same room. room. Like maybe they're social, I don't know. I mean, how, how can you say the with the people in the camp. fight camp? You know? It just blows my mind. It blows my mind. <laughs> I'm not scared. I'm not a pussy. Don't get me wrong, but I don't see how we have sports in this environment. How are we burning tests on stuff that's not essential? These sports aren't essential. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a waste of resources. Now look about it. Think about it. These guys are got getting fucked up. Like people are getting knocked out this card. You know, they beat the that, brakes that off. Gash in the knee or on Wednesday, there was like he like split his shin open. Yes. These, and this requires medical professionals to look after these people after they get beat up. Mm -hmm. These doctors could be helping COVID patients. These doctors could be helping other people that are just old and sick. And a I lot mean, of death. Must be a lot surplus. And that was the issue. Like, there might be a surplus in doctors. Like, you might have a private doctor 
but there was a shortage in medical supplies. Like that's the thing. They're, Cause everybody was like, Oh, they're private doctors. I was like, if worldwide there's not enough gloves, it doesn't matter if you have a private doctor. That means there's somebody that's dealing with COVID that couldn't buy gloves. Maybe now the scarcity isn't as bad because they were talking about, they were talking about this right when it locked down. Maybe it's a little bit better, but you know, there's other implications to it. That it's just, it's just very, it's all bad. It's all bad. I try to be a centrist on this. I try to see both sides and I did. I don't see it, man. I don't see how this this is necessary. I know. I, I think people are just scared. They can't hold water. People are just so afraid that they need any little bit of normalcy that they can get, and sports can provide that for them. Unfortunately, in my mind, I don't see how sports are necessary right now, and I'm trying to make it so we get back to normal or the new normal or being able to at least go to the gym without me worrying about getting a family member or myself sick. And it's going to, the, the quicker we just follow protocol, the quicker we slow stuff down, the quicker it'll come back. I don't see basketball coming back this year. I don't see football happening. I don't think there's going to be a major U.S. sport or at least with people in it until baseball season next year. What do you think? I, think I know, I know 2020 is done. Yeah. It's I've, done. I've, I've canceled 2020. Like it's I done. like, and I used to see people like posting about June. Now I know like DC is locked down till June. Maryland's opening up, but like people are like, Oh, oh have an event. Not New York up, June. we're not opening up. We're like letting people, yeah. we're letting barbershops open with 50% capacity. I think. Like it's very, it's barely even. No gyms and shit are open. Like, there are gyms that are open. There, there are some. Yeah, yeah like I, yeah. I've heard of um, in Texas, not in Maryland. Not in Maryland. Not in Maryland. I have, I have rumored, and I don't even want to like mention it. Like, uh, but of conditioning classes, like a limited number of people, social distancing. Um, but I have heard of. I mean, but I've also seen people at parties and this and that. Like, I mean, there are uh, there are a select. There's like maybe three or four people that I see in quarantine for business reasons or whatnot. Yo, but if they train jujitsu, I'd be getting it in with them. Like, but they don't. <laughs> so yeah, I like. You I know don't. If I had like a jujitsu quarantine buddy, like I would, like I would probably find one. Like everybody that's got like a jujitsu bay and mats at home, I hate them right now. Yeah, I hate them too. Yeah, but I hate, uh, them. I hate them with the most most sincerity. But in all my heart, I hate them. I should I just should have been a good boy and got a nice jujitsu girlfriend and had a room. That's what I should have done. Well, I mean, like maybe you could put an ad out. You could do like if you have an extra room in your house, like do a two week quarantine period, like that pod dating show on the Netflix. You could do that. The what? The pod. There's like a uh, where they're in pods and they can't see each other. It's like trending on Netflix. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I'll and check it, that it out. Stays in the pod for like two weeks. So you guys could get to know each other and then like actually maybe have physical contact. And that's how life is going to be starting 2020. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst. How do you even like, date somebody without? I can't. I can't. I can't understand it, man. You gotta, gotta have that physical contact. You can't just. Shit, man. I I can't imagine dating someone in this time. Like I feel like a lot of people are getting dumped. I feel like a lot of people are getting dumped. Probably. Uh, I, I tried to break up with somebody in the quarantine. <laughs> it's like you might as well like it's a new it's a new beginning. You might as well like shit. Like I mean I oh man. <laughs> long distance does not work. I don't think long distance work and like I this not being able to like get in touch with people is the worst. Like this is like the worst thing you could possibly imagine for someone that trains every day. Let alone like like Whew. 
it's that nonverbal <laughs> contact too. It's like now I actually have to talk to people. Like before it was just like back takes, jokes. Like now it's like, oh, okay. But I think it makes the community stronger. It, like if you're, if like a t the teams or the people that are communicating and talking about jujitsu philosophy and really breaking it down, they're going to have a huge advantage coming back. When do we come back though? When's the first tournament? Europeans, January. You think January? Um, no, no, I don't know. That's just my thought. I don't, I don't know. Like, you tell me. January next year. You think January next no, year? That would be horrible. That's too far. Man, it's like. You think it'll be. It, but imagine, like, what is it? It's May, so we're about to miss, like, Worlds this year is out. You think yeah. Europeans this year is out. So, like, Worlds next year? Like, but what, like, what if Jiu-Jitsu starts right before Worlds? Like, you flying out to Worlds after you've just been quarantined for a year? Like, damn. If, if I have eight weeks to prepare, I'll do Worlds. If I have eight weeks to prepare, like, if, if, if it's within a reasonable, if I talk to the people that are in the know, and it's within reason that I won't get myself or someone else sick, if you give me, like, six to eight weeks, I'll do Worlds. No question. I'll do Worlds. I'm thinking I'm fully prepared not to compete until ADCC next year. So I'm thinking August, September 2021. That's for me. I think it won't be on and popping until ADCC 2021. And I don't think, I think that because people are going to be really scared. And if these sports come back, I feel like people are going to get a little bit more sick, like more people get sick. And then, and then there's not going to be any major events. So I'm thinking like ADCC next year. <laughs> but I told the guys at ADCC, like, I'll see you at trials in five months. That's October. Maybe. I was told by someone that we're not getting off lockdown until like in the summer completely. I don't think so either. I mean, well, I think I'm going to be in the house like, until I'm going to have there's like the a, end of lockdown and I'm still not going to be that first wave of people out. What's gonna like, so <laughs> it's like, I I the end of lockdown. like if we had like, if lockdown ended in like, September. I'm not flying out to Cali in October, I don't think. Like Yeah, you're right. I don't even know. Like and this is coming from me. Like it, like people nobody knows where I live. People think I'm all over the place all the time. Like and I kinda am. But and like and I'm like I'll be right here for a little bit. But then you can best believe when we do start traveling, I am definitely not missing Europeans and I'm not missing Brazilian nationals. And I was supposed to go to Angola last year. So, you know, when I do get out, like I'm going up big. So I'm definitely don't want to be in that first wave and end up getting sick because Brazil, Portugal, Angola. I'm a, I'm a, I, my goals are, before I wrap up, my goals are here. Do all the tournaments. So I want to win, you know, the Abu Dhabi Grand Slam. I want to win all the Grand Slam tournaments gi, uh, in the Gi. I want to do, I want to win the other fight to win world title. The one in the, in the Ogi. I want to win, a, I want to win all the big super fights. Uh, 100 push-ups in a row. That's what I'm working for. Like 100 real push-ups in a row, which is really freaking hard. Uh, and expand the brand. Oh yeah, and mind map my entire game. Oh, That's my goals. My, my martial arts goals. How I'm far almost have you gotten in your mind map? Huh? How far have you gotten? It's so involved, like I would have to handwrite it all before I try to put it on the on the computer, uh on the computer. It's a lot. It's a lot and I haven't even mastered it yet in my mind. And whenever I go to sit down and do it, I just like scratch my head. I'm like, God damn, like I got to do open guard now, like that kind of stuff. And that's what's the tragic part about all this. Like I was plotting to get a drilling 
thing in, like to really hone my stuff in. Like I was ready, Nico. I was three days away from winning pans. Like I was gonna kill it at pans. Like I was ready. But that's that's okay. I have more than enough free time to get those goals accomplished and get this scrilla. So by the time you get back to training, you'll have all like He's like, you did a lot of work on your website. So also like, so you made a mind map for me. So we should drop the link in the bio so that they can see. Cause we did another video where we looked at my mind map. Um, yeah. Cause like, I can only imagine what yours would look like if mine was, <laughs> if mine was as extensive as it is. But like, yeah, like between all the work you've been doing now, like then when you get back to competing, you don't got to worry about the business end of it. Like you have money coming in independent of sponsors who are, not functioning right now. No, the sponsor's not functioning at all. It's like it's dead. It is dead, but it's okay. We another gonna topic figure it out. Episode? Huh? Another topic for another episode? Another topic for another episode. Uh yeah. Make sure you guys go to Tim Spriggs BJJ dot com for all things Tim Spriggs, especially for my virtual coaching. That means mind maps, match critiques. If you want to book a seminar or private lessons for when there's no longer a plague sweeping across the entire globe, go to timspriggsbjj.com. Anything you want to plug, Nico? Uh, no, you can check out some of the stuff that I've been doing on favelajujitsu.com. So, like, uh, when Tim drops his merch, it'll be on favelajujitsu.com. We have Mushmaster hoodies that are there we will be dropping the black t-shirt i believe with this episode so if you're seeing this yes yes oh actually i have one it's right here so you can go to who elegant some and get this beautiful thing um yeah and i've just been doing more content and articles on favela jiu-jitsu so like i have some people i've been like looking up a lot on like welfare in brazil and like what's been going on and um, so just check that out for some interesting and free content. Two more things. One, everyone's been asking about the train wreck system. Nico and I were in the middle of production and all this shit We were down. about to set a date. We finally had everything yes. up to a date and then- Ready to go, the script, everything ready. Word for word, halfway through production and the global pandemic but it is on the way i'm gonna put this out there lord willing it'll be out by christmas so everything will be clear and we can drop it before christmas so you can give it to the badass in your life that wants to learn how to smash someone's brains into the mat so it is on the way please be patient please be patient and one last thing bjj goons is back and in honor of that, I have decided to drop a compilation tape on YouTube. Yes, I have dropped Quarantine Bingers, volume one, because there will be more to come. This is a playlist on YouTube with content curated by yours truly, the Mushmaster. The best representation of what BJJ Goon stand, stands for in video form. So make sure you go to the BJJ Goons YouTube channel, go to the playlist, Quarantine Bangers. Great martial arts and cultural content right there, guys. Combat sports history, great matches, great fights, great interviews, all that good stuff. So watch Quarantine Bangers right now. Like, share, subscribe to the BJJ Goons channel. Like all the videos on that playlist. Like all my stuff. Follow me on Instagram. Yeah, at Tim's get Spring that Day. support, that community. Yes, that community. Support me. Don't you want to see me slam people on dome all across the world? That costs money, folks. That costs money. So I'm trying to make this money, but I'm providing you guys a service. I'm giving you virtual coaching. I'm mind mapping your techniques. I have your whole game plan set up for you with your best techniques, your best positions from the starting position with the grips from to your best positions, to your best attacks, to your best finishes from start to finish. Your game plan is made for you by me, Tim Spriggs, Black Belt Nogi World Champion. Also, I do match critiques. I watch your footage. 
I give you a voiceover critique, I pause the video, I rewind it, circle where you're supposed to put your grips. I'm like the John Madden of jujitsu, folks. I'm doing that for you. So get yourself a match critique by me. This is all at timspreesbjj.com. Doing life for life. See you guys next time. Peace. Well,